Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you are new here, hi, my name is Natasha, and it's fantastic to have you here. For today's video, I am so excited to share with you the Nature Spirit Tarot, written and illustrated by Jean Marie Herzl. Hopefully I'm saying her name right. The 78 card deck with a book that's full color for the journey of the soul. This will retail for $35 and it will be out in March, 2021. Yeah, I got a pre-release. Ah! <laughs> I got some PR. So I'm excited to share with you what I think about this because I have already opened her up. I have flipped through it myself and I have taken a look at the guidebook and I am excited to share my opinions with you. So like I said, it will be $35. I will link all of the links down in the description box. And now let's get started. Published by Bear and Company. And the back says, weaving the wisdom of the tarot with the vastness and mystery of the natural world, artist Jean Marie Herzl offers the 78 card full color tarot deck of hand painted watercolors that features the colorful language of flowers and the esoteric and symbolic images of plants, birds, insects, reptiles, and gemstones. The symbolism of each card is derived from various traditions of the world, including Native American, Celtic, and Eastern and Western philosophy. In the accompanying guidebook, each card describes Description opens with the traditional tarot meaning of the card, followed by a detailed explanation of the symbolic meaning of the specific plants and animals the card features. The book explains the connections between each life form shown in the card's tarot archetype, further illuminating the meaning of the card and how it relates to the natural world, personal development, and the journey of the soul, revealing a new vision of both the surrounding world and the unexplored territory within. So, like I said, I have already opened her up. The guidebook is really nice. You guys, there's so much information in here. So first off, I'm gonna tell you my like big pet peeve and it's this packaging. I understand why it's done. However, um, I just, the split cards for me and just how I work, it's a first world problem. So it's not an, a huge issue, it's just this is, a little annoyance for me. However, I understand to fit this guide book that's nice and big and thick in, it makes sense. I get it. I'm just saying that's like my one and only pet peeve. So that's pretty great. I really enjoy this guidebook because there's a lot of information that I myself did not know about some of these plants and some of these critters. So that's fantastic as well. And it is full color. And take a look at the print. Okay. If you have eyesight like mine, that is so nice to see because you can actually read it without having to hold it right up to your nose. So that's fantastic. It also has some spreads in here as well in the back. So if you are wanting to check out this deck and want um, some spreads that go along with the theme of the deck, we have it all here. We have the three card, the horseshoe spread, and the Celtic uh, cross. And then we have the about the author. So there's a lot of information here, like I said, that was pretty interesting to me that made sense with the card. So if you're a beginner and you look at the imagery and you feel like it might be intimidating, it makes sense when you read the guidebook. Okay, so let's take a look, shall we? The back is really cute. The cardstock is actually not glossy. Like, I'll call it like a semi-gloss because you can kind of see a reflection in there, but like it's not glossy, glossy. The cardstock is a little bit on the thinner side. It's not my favorite, but it's durable. It's going to last. It should be fine to work with, um, especially for the price for $35. The amount that you're getting for the deck here, I'm not mad about it. I have seen a lot worse in cardstock. So let's get into it. And I also love that this deck does not feature any human at all. So it's really fun to kind of immerse yourself in this. I love this one, by the way. You get a lot of the symbols too in each card. There's always something else to look at that maybe you might not have seen the last time you saw it or worked with it. 
So for people out there who don't really relate to a lot of the people decks, this might be a good one for you to check out, especially if you like different critters. There's all sorts of different animals in here. And then check this out. Like they're not horses. <laughs> That's amazing. So this particular deck was on my um, list to, to review. So I'm really excited that I get to do it early. Get a little sneak peek. I also feel like it could be similar to other decks that have a nature theme. I know I've reviewed quite a bit of them on this channel, but this is done in a different way. It's a little bit more um, symbolic than the others. I don't know how else to explain it other than like there's there's a lot to look into with this one. I feel like adding of the crystals and adding different flowers along with the little critters, it just makes the card energy flesh out. This card got me. I was like, what is that at first? <laughs> I do like the seahorses that are attached to him. I mean, it makes sense. This was fun too. So you get you'll you'll be able to learn if you're a beginner just with uh, the imagery here because it allows you to use your intuition. And then if you are already intermediate and beyond um, experienced, you'll appreciate the imagery in this as well. The sunflowers. And there was another thing that we're getting to about different colors, the use of the colors in the background. I love this. The Celtic tree of life. So gorgeous. So you'll notice as we go forward with the Minor Arcana, the uh, background is going to be similar colors, if not the same color. And you'll only see the titles of what the card is on the court cards and the aces. So we're in the cups. And that's the other thing that I appreciate about this deck is they're not pip cards or they're not just the symbols. You get an actual experience with each card, much like the traditional Rider Waite Smith card or deck, excuse me. Little gecko. I want a gecko. The husband told me, no, it's too much upkeep. <laughs> I don't know if I told you guys, but apparently we um, got adopted by a stray cat in the neighborhood, or I'll say a neighborhood cat. So um, she's been amazing, and I absolutely love her, and apparently she's ours now. So yeah, we have like a, a farm going on in our household, and I, I love it. Okay, and so I really appreciated the use of the crystals with the wands, as you'll notice. And now we have a yellow background. I like this one so much. Just, just waiting. And look at how beautiful this is. I got a kick out of the different bugs battling it out. <laughs> it's adorable. So what we'll do is we will flip through the rest of these. We'll shuffle and we will pull a card and see how it will be read from the guidebook. And there is a lot of information. It's great. I mean, like I said, my only pet peeve is the packaging, but I completely understand why it was done the way it was done. That's all. Like, I can't complain about anything else, really, because everything else is just nitpicky and it's up to preferences. So in my opinion, I'm really happy with how this deck turned out. And I love... Okay, so swords aren't 
usually one of my favorite suits to look at just because I feel like they're usually very similar. But look at just the creative direction that was done with this. Like this is just such a neat way, like there's flowers on for the handles. I don't know, I'm impressed. Like this little black widow here. She's got it all tied up in her web. There's just more and more things that you're going to find going through this because this, again, like I said, is my second time going through it and I'm still noticing different things. I couldn't tell you the names of the, the bugs besides the, the more common ones like the ladybugs. But it's so neat to see them represented here. <laughs> His little face. I think possibly this suit is my favorite out of the deck. I just love the colors. And I mean, Flamingo, hello. So cute. It's just a fun and happy little deck. This guy is so cute. This sweetie. It just, it makes me feel like I'm part of like a fairy world. Like I'm a little fairy being the, the same fly on the wall, but like a fairy in the forest, like just overseeing this little adventure. I love this little honeybee with the honeycomb. Like just a cornucopia, fruits of your labor. Oh, love it. Bounty. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Fitting. Oh, look at the turkey. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's shuffle, shall we? I like the size of it too. It's very similar to like a Llewellyn deck or a low Scarabio deck size. It shuffles just fine. Like I don't have any issues with it at all. I really like that it does not have the glossy coating because that usually tends to stick when you're doing shuffling like this. Um, and again, that's just a nitpicky pet peeve of mine. So let's just pull a card. Can I get a card, please? Someone want to pop out? Okay. And we're doing five, six, seven of swords. Okay. I just bent that. So it does have an index in the front or a contents. <laughs> So we have swords, so that's gonna start on 115. And it does have a little um, cover for each suit. And so the swords courageously soaring on air currents of the mind to face duality and illusion. Okay, so let's get to the seven. Here we go. Okay, can you see? Look at all that info. I am going to read it, so if this isn't interesting to you, I apologize, but I feel like you'll get the sense of the deck if I read it all. So Seven of Swords is the card of partial success. Something in the works is unsettled. We are in the state of in-between. To our credit, we have accomplished certain things, yet we will have to return and conquer further challenges. The situation is represented by the character heading away with five swords under wing while looking back at the two swords that remain planted. This suggests an awareness of remaining unresolved aspects. Issues such as instability, choices yet to be made, or lack of direction are examples of persistent concerns. The Seven of Swords also warns against deception, 
a negative skill that is never justified and will not serve us well. Examined from the perspective of our spiritual quest, this card tells us that we are not yet fully grounded in the new higher consciousness that we seek. With this in mind, it is important to focus on the spiritual mastery that we have gained with the five swords in order to put our skills to use and bring these aspects into reality. This card suggests that we make our choices carefully, avoid irrational, impulsive, and misguided action to the best of our ability, and move ahead. So the little critter is the Stellar's Jay. The Stellar's Jay is native to Western North America and closely related to the Blue Jay that is found across the rest of the continent. It has a distinct, distinctive black crest on its head and a striking deep blue body. Stellar Jays live primarily in forested areas at lower elevation and are often seed at bird, seen at bird feeders during the winter months. They are very vocal and entertaining. The key symbolic meaning of the Jay is mastering the skills that we are learning. To do so involves the proper use of personal power through being present. The J teaches us to use our power correctly and efficiently. A resourceful and adaptable bird, the J represents great talent and innate wisdom. The crest on its head links the bird to higher powers. The J reminds us that true power must be used with integrity and balance. The J can, however, be deceptive. It often steals food from campers. <laughs> and nesting material from other birds. When in the act of thievery, it makes a great deal of noise to create a chaotic scene, which works to its advantage. Oh my gosh. This disruption of energy is how the J succeeds. It is sometimes perceived as a negative quality, suggesting the trickery sometimes indicated by the Seven of Swords. Fantastic. Okay. And then we have the Trumpet Honeysuckle, which is the, the little flower here. The wild honeysuckle grows all over the world. Trumpet honeysuckle, also known as coral honeysuckle, is native to the eastern and southern United States. This climbing vine wraps itself around trees in dense woodlands and thickets and can reach a height of 12 feet. Wow. In Britain, the native honeysuckle is also known as woodbind or woodbine because of the way it climbs, clings, and winds its way up the trees to the higher realms. Honeysuckles are known for their heavenly fragrance, which attracts pollinating insects and hummingbirds. The most appropriate symbol is of the honeysuckle relating to the seven of swords is its meaning as the pathway to inner knowledge. The clinging and binding nature of the plant has also led to common symbolic meanings such as the bonds of love, devotion, and protection. So that is a lot of information, but a lot of good information, if that makes sense. I love how she ties in the symbolism to the energy of the card. So it makes complete sense. So like I said, if you're a beginner, it will make a lot more sense um, to you to, to use the guidebook. It's not just, you know, giving you keywords. It's actually letting you know the, the symbols behind the meaning, if that makes sense. So you can use your intuition a lot better now that you know what the symbols mean. It, it, it will work for you. So whatever level you are, I think this will be fantastic if you're drawn to it, if you're called to it. I'm excited to start using it. It's really cute. It's really a fun deck. It's like, like I said, it's like being in a little fairy wonderland. Like you're seeing all of these critters and you're shrunk down and you see all of this. It's fun. So for those of you who love nature inspired decks or do not like anything having to do with actual humans in their decks, this is one to check out. And I really honestly don't have anything negative to say about it. I really enjoy it. I think the price point is a good price point. It's a huge book. It's color printed and, you know, it's well within the range of what I would price point it at. So what I would like to know is what you think of this deck. Let me know down in the comment section if this is something that has been on your wish list or you had no idea about it until now and now you're excited about it. Or what do you like? What do you dislike about the deck? I'm curious to know because I'm excited about it. All right. And also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell on your way out of this video. That way you'll never miss an upload from me. And with that being said, I hope you all are happy, healthy, and staying safe, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.